Hi everybody, Father Bill Holzinger here, and this is your Friday-ish reflection, uh, meaning hopefully I'm getting this out a little earlier, maybe Thursday, because of a timely message I want to make sure that everybody hears prior to Saturday morning, and that is our communal reconciliation service, which is at 10 a.m. Last year we had a great turnout, we had almost 400 people, and we had a lot of priests, we're going to do that again. But let me back up a bit, and I just kind of want to share a little bit of my heart and want to encourage you. If you're not sure if you want to go or not, or if you've been gone for a long time, for me, uh, as, a, as a Catholic, I grew up, uh, learned how to go to confession, found it to be very scary. And even as an adult now, there's times I'm very nervous about going because I'm embarrassed to admit certain things, my sins. And I suppose if I wasn't embarrassed, if I wasn't feeling bad about that, then uh, maybe I'd be on the other side of the worst world that is an, uh, in heaven somewhere because we're all sinners. I'm broken. Uh, we just continue to struggle in this regard. But the good news is that God's love is more powerful than our sins, no matter what your sins are. I struggle with just being, you know, feeling guilty and not being able to reconcile in my mind that God could love me. But going to confession really, as a young person, convinced me because I would come out of the confessional. I remember my sister uh, Carolyn telling me about this, I, and I remember feeling it. I don't remember exactly saying it, but I'm sure I did, that I kind of came out of the confessional going, wow, I mean, I'm, I have no sin on my soul at all. I'm free. See, even as a young person, I recognize that sin, it creates weight in our soul. It burdens us down. It causes more sin. We even have thoughts of, well, if I've just done it once, why just go ahead and do it again? What does it matter? Confession is one of those things that kind of switches us out of that, let's say, inebriation of sin into clarity and reason and joy and hope. Do you have that now? And if you don't, this is a reason to go to confession so that you can find that you can be set free from these things. You're not bound to your sins. That God, he suffered on the cross to free us from our sins. And he's given us, through his apostles and the apostles after them, the authority to forgive sins in his name. As a priest of that church, I now participate in that amazing gift. But it's not about my holiness in this regard. It's about God's holiness and what he wants to do. And it's you know, kind of scandalous to think about God would work through us feeble human beings. But know this again, that when you come to confession, God already knows everything. But he wants you to express that. He wants you to express your repentance for your healing and for my healing. It's different than just going in the backyard and saying, hey, God, forgive me, and hoping that I can conjure up a feeling of being forgiven. When you go to confession, you, we know, you know if you've done it, when that priest says, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, something mystical happens. He has heard, the priest has heard all of our sins that we could offer that moment, and it is washed away. What a great feeling. It's, it's, it's really actually scandalous, though, also because we have the sensibility, and I do struggle with this myself, that if I've done the crime, I must pay the time. And yet, our Lord loves us. It's kind of like, here's another example. If you're a parent, you know that your children make mistakes and they're not perfect, they bumble, and, and you still love them. And in fact, you might even take some of their drawings, color drawings or watercolors, crayons or whatever, and they're not perfect, they're kind of, you know, they're not experts. And you might even pin them to the front of your refrigerator and you go, look at this. This is my son or daughter's a beautiful picture. Well, is it, is it technically beautiful? Well, no, it's, it's kind of scratchy. It's uh, stick figures that are all disshapen and it's, the, the coloring is not coloring in the lines. It's, it, maybe it's not even a mess. But yet, as a parent, you know the beauty that's behind this. You know the beauty of the child that's created that drawing. That's how God looks on us. He knows the beauty and the love that we have, but we write in our lives with crooked lines and broken crayons and spill our paint all over the place in our sins. 
God wants to forgive us. So don't be afraid of him. He deeply desires that you would come to him. Don't let the, the fear of another person hearing what you're going to say in the confessional get you down. Remember, the priest, we can't say anything about it. We won't be talking about it to anyone. We would rather go to jail. And even then, we wouldn't say what the sins that were confessed are. And I want to let you know that uh, I've hand-selected the priest for our penitential service, our reconciliation service. There were about 10 of us. And they're all wonderful and holy, kind priests. So come. This is, again, this Saturday at 10 a.m. I hope to see you. And if you come, it's going to be very simple. Because of the numbers of people that come, we won't have time to really hear all the stories of people. In fact, what I'll do is I'll kind of have to just walk through the, the deadly sins. And I'll ask that even now, if you want to go through those deadly sins, you can. And start reflecting on where have you committed sins in those areas. Think about them and pray about them. Bring them forward so that when you come to the reconciliation service, you don't need to get into the details. Remember, God already knows that. But that you would just confess the sin. It may have happened many times. You might even say, I've committed the sin of pride. You don't need to say the number, but you might say many times. If it's once, you might say, I committed the sin of pride once. We really can't count. I mean, the church tells us to talk about the sin in kind and number. The kind would be that deadly sin. The number would be if it's many or few or once. As opposed to like, I committed the, si the, the sin of gluttony 2.3 times. You see, the scrupulosity can start to set in. But when you come then, we'll all offer our act of contrition as a community. So you don't need to remember that. There'll be a program. You'll be given a penance. I'll offer a penance for everybody. And then you'll come to confession. Get in line. And the, the confessions will go faster because there's so many, but also because you're going to focus... And everybody's going to focus on these sins, two or three of them. And just speak what those sins are. And then we will give you absolution. Again, it's not a time for a long discussion or context because of the number of people. But you are going to confess your sin. And in line, actually, you'll have an opportunity. If you're not first or second or third, you'll have time to, again, once you know, ponder on those sins. But I want to ask you to prepare now. I'm recording this on Wednesday night, but you'll probably see this on, hopefully on Thursday. Bring your family. Bring a friend. Maybe you have a friend who's shy or afraid. The joy that happens after receiving absolution is immense. And, I know why, and I'd want to encourage you to remember that. The, the joy of receiving forgiveness from God. It's not something that you're conjuring up and you have to imagine because you'll hear through the minister what God wants to absolve you of your sins in his name, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This weekend, Father Anthony's preaching. Pray for him as he's preparing. The theme will be healing as Eucharistic people. And last week I spoke about how we are to love sacrificially as Eucharistic people. God bless you, everybody. I'll see you this weekend. Bye-bye. I really like this chair. It squivels. Yoda, that's my little collection of gifts that people have given to my dog, Snickers. There's Yoda. I guess it's a reindeer. Everybody's got to have an alligator. A ball on a string. A moose. Everybody's got to have a moose, right? A moose. Ah. <laughs>